No, oh, Gotland's pretty good. I think I think Gotland might be the plan. I think we'll go Gotland and we make a custom character. It'll be an interesting challenge to see what we can do over here, though. But we can have a whole like, um, you know, where the uh, what are, what are the um, the Ironborn ones from Game of Thrones, you know, kind of thing. And yes, we can migrate as well, which might be a possibility. We can start here and maybe migrate to air. It'll depend on the side of it, but that would be the big get. If we could pull that off, um, either we migrate to here or we we migrate down to um, air over here, which I think, yeah, is this section over here. It, it depends on, uh, it gets um, like culturally named, but this is the, the sort of duchy of air over here, depending on our particular culture that we play as. I mean, we could do something crazy, like start here, make a custom character that's Norse. I mean, we wouldn't even be coastal, though, which wouldn't be good. Either. So I think we start in Gotland, um, and maybe we do adventures to migrate. Maybe we don't. I don't know. It'll be, I think it's going to be very contextual based on, on whatever comes up, um, you know, how vulnerable these guys are. I think these guys start outside of our diplomatic range, uh, which means, A, we may have to migrate a little bit first before we go there, or B, we end up taking the family legacy stuff of the, um, the adventure track of the family, like the dynasty tree, which one of the first ones give you 30% more diplomatic range, which might be enough to make the jump over there. So we'll see. Norse and Brittany, that's, I guess that's a possibility, but I don't know, I kind of like the idea of starting in Scotland. So I think we're gonna do that. I think we are gonna create our own custom ruler though, over here. Um, I think for, for simplicity's sake, I think we will go male. We'll probably also make sure that we're heterosexual so that we can start making a bunch of like, we you know, fewer difficulties making a bunch of babies. I love his, his hair. Could be a little curlier to match mine, but uh, you know, it's a bit of a start. So I feel um, like we should, uh, maybe maybe our first character should just be called Quill, but I think our family should be Petrosun, like that, right? Sort of uh, Nordic naming convention. So theoretically our, our father was Petra, or maybe our mother, because Petra is a female name. I don't know, something like that, make him a dwarf. I don't know, I thought I thought we'd start in pretty vanilla. Hey, Halco, thank you very much. Uh, HRA Halco. <laughs> uh, totally not a bribe. Um, oh, sure. Oh, sure. Pronounce Gotland like Scotland? Am I not pronouncing Gotland like Scotland? Or should it be more like Gotland? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Peterson, yeah, and uh, uh, Peter, like, we could go Peter or even... But I don't know. Maybe maybe we're, we're named after our mother Petra. We're, we're Petra's son. Could still be. I feel like we need to go Petra. I think we should just commit to it. Done. 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 Um. In terms of customization, so I'm wondering if we we make a character who might be really good at leading armies to do his own raids. So we could do something like, uh, we could give him the Brilliant Strategist over here, uh, which will give him a bunch of martial, plus the martial lifestyle experience. What we could do for our lifestyle, we could take the, um, what's it called, like the chivalry track? Because doesn't it give us a bunch of, well, it gives us a bunch of attractiveness and romance options. I don't know if it actually increased our fertility. You know? It's whiskey and chocolate. Hey, Tony! Thank you very much. Uh, oh, and also, uh, you know, shout out to you for uh, joining the uh, Kiss Flux community. So on newspaper clipping, uh, got land will travel. No sea crossing too small. All reasonable loot considered. First daughter is, is Petra. Yeah. It is unfortunate that it doesn't, it won't do like, you know, the son or dotir kind of, uh, you know, proper naming convention. We have to just have our dynasty. But yeah, maybe maybe we'll just have our first male child be Peter, first female child be Petra. Maybe like one of each or maybe literally just the first child gets the Peter slash Petra name as, as a bit of a thing. I don't know. <laughs> so... We could go with like, I don't know, an 18 Marshall. We could do like an 18 Prowess, just just for cuz. I feel like we should make ourselves uh, as young as possible still be an adult, which would be 16. Interestingly enough, and I don't know why, it's actually cheaper, you, it, it spends less points on your customization to start at 16. I mean, I don't think I'll enable Iron Man run over here, but we'll stay within the 400 point limit. It, it still does the son daughter naming thing? Oh, it just says you're a dynasty. That's right. So our son will be, you know, blah, Quilson, Petrison. Right? I think it will do something like that. Yeah. 
So should our dynasty be names be something else then? Since it is going to be the son of Doter, it's going to put that in anyway. Should our dynasty just be like, I don't know, the Twitch dynasty or something? You know what I mean? Petrling? Oh! Right, like Carling and whatnot, like for the dynasty name. That's not bad. The Quillings. Sprout. I like Petrling. I think we'll go with the Petrling dynasty. I really, really quite like that. Uh, wait, are we starting the not a bribe train early in that case? Why did the Viking buy an old boat? He couldn't afford a new one. Yeah. Take ambitious and brave for dueling reasons. I mean, that starts to get expensive. Um, but I like what you're saying. Ambitious. Does it give us uh, different options in dueling? That's quite cool. We get a lot more stress. It's worth a lot of points. And I mean brave. I mean brave is just like stupid strong. This would all stack into a lot of prowess, but what we can actually do is pull it back so we can still start with 18 prowess. I mean, we could go crazy high on the prowess so that we're like death at dueling, but I kind of like the idea of starting with like the 18 and the 18 and then just, you know, spending up a little bit and like balancing some of the others just so that we're not apocalyptically bad or anything. There might be like some particular breakpoints that would be very handy to have over here. I mean, and that's the thing. None of these are our genetic traits. We could just take, um, uh, that's personality. If we went over here, we could take, like, I mean, there's this Blade Master. We could learn that as we go. But, um, where are the genetic traits? There you go. So we could take, like, Herculean. <laughs> I like how he just gets completely buff. You know, we could start with, like, a strong genetic trait, but I feel like, the genetic traits should be something we we hunt for, you know, rather than start with. Have you ever played Crusader Kings? It's similar to EU4. There's some overlap, but it's really about characters more than anything else. You possessed. What I like about possessed is that it's also congenital. Oh, well, uh... There you go. We'll give us a couple of extra ticks of learning. We'll go with this. Maybe I should roll like 3d6 to get my stats D&D style. Commander trait like Raider Winter Soldier. Maybe. Hopefully he'll develop. He's only 16. Like, he doesn't have the experience. Like, it, it turns... He's ambitious and he's brave right out of the box. And he's gotten a good education. But no, he's going to have to earn those commander traits. How about that? I think I like that. Rolling for stats is the worst way to get your stats. <laughs> yeah. So we're at exactly 400 points. It seems okay. Um, I mean, I, I look like a Viking-ish. I mean, young still, but I think that's going to be okay. I think I think we'll just go. Poor guy doesn't have trousers. Yeah, not yet. Not, there's no naughtiness necessarily, it's just, you know, I want an alliteration. We could change the title to something else if you guys can think of something else. We can name it after Gotland or something as well. Alright, let's go. Uh, I think these are fine, I think these are fine. Uh, the religion is correct. It's whiskey and chocolate! Gotland as the title, that's kind of funny. Uh, junk. Okay, hold on. Let's finalize. Finalize. Start. Uh, Junk, thank you very much! Please conquer Vestjutland, West Jutland, in the part just under Limforden, the waterway that crosses Jutland, to make it possible for me to hail the, on the only true and rightful king. I live near ish. Uh, alright, well, we'll see what we can do. West Jutland. Uh, Jutland? I was thinking Jutland. Where, where's Jutland? I don't know where these things are. Well, you'll, you'll let me know, I'm sure. Um, got land? Question mark? There we go. Yeah, this is going to be tricky. So, the thing is, there's going to be a lot of 
probably not a heck of a lot happening right at first. Because the problem is, right out of the box, we don't have a lot of soldiers. 365, even doing raids with this many soldiers, I'm going to have to move my head somewhere. I think maybe a little over here. That shouldn't cover the war screens or anything like that. Um, even doing a raid, it's very likely that people are just going to be able to raise enough troops to fight us off. What we may have to do is wait until other people are in a war and then go and try to do some raiding at that point. Um, what will make a really big difference for us is if we do get... Um, oh, actually, let me open the outliner. It'll be a little easier for us to find our holdings here. Um, if we do get uh, these various extra buildings and increase our levy count, that should be able to make a significant amount of difference. It'll cost you more to take your boat across and bring it back on a raid. I think you do get a discount on the boats for the raiding groups, but yeah, you're going to lose some doing doing the boaty things, which is kind of annoying. We can actually see right now, if I go raise all his raiders, when we, uh, when, when this finishes raising, what we'll do is we can pause, right click on like a place and see how much it tells us the ocean crossing will cost us. So we'll see how it goes. Boat, the boats are free. Is that it? For, free for Vikings. Ah, okay. As I say, I'm pretty sure it's actually not a problem. Um, if we take a look at our Norse culture, so as the Norse culture, what do we have? We have Viking tactics over here, so we can recruit special men at arms, long ships, raid overseas, if you can already raise, which we can do, raid rather, uh, major rivers, embarkation 75% off. As I say, it's, it seems cheaper, and we move a little faster. I don't think it's free, but it's very cheap yeah, with the long ships. Herds, we can uh, recruit Skarls. Uh, we can do the Varangian Adventure CB, which is the one where we make an adventure party and basically migrate if we win. Um, and then all things over here. Oh, yes, we can uh, change our crown authority and tribal authority um, and by spending prestige. Uh, oh, what do we have here? First of all, Name Moose came in. Thank you very much, Name Moose. As a moose from the north who now lives further south, I do understand the desire to migrate. Be careful, though. There's a lot of humans there, and they can be a bit weird. You're not wrong about that, that's for sure. Humans are very, very bizarre. And Twitch Medical Officer, thank you as well. I, as the self-proclaimed Medical Officer of Twitch, hereby request ye to drink water. Everyone else, stay hydrated or face the dungeon. Mmm. Oh yeah, what is my dynasty's motto? Peace! <laughs> we are absolute pacifists. That was randomly generated, that's amazing. Should we just change our, our motto to pacifism instead of peace? I mean, it's effectively the same piece that's amazing uh, anyway so I mean we could we could we'll try maybe slapping down a raid right away but suspect we will probably get stopped almost immediately more whiskey and chocolate with that oh mr. right side thank you very much still don't have the game but every time I want well is it it's free to play right now isn't it I think it's free to play right now for like a few more days so if you want to give it a try I it should be available on Steam I think until the 20th or 21st or something like that um, every time I watch you, I'm tempted. Also, some money for Swiss chocolate again. Ooh. Sadly, we don't have proper whiskey here. What do you make in, in, you know, there must be Swiss alcohol. You probably make your own, like, schnapps or something like that. Peace among worlds! Yes! The like us when we win. Add an, add an extra set of quotes around peace. <laughs> Peace. All right. Um, first things first, let's get married. Because if we don't make some babies, we're going to lose the game pretty darn fast. Um, it would be nice to marry for, like, good congenital traits. But... Well, that might work out, actually. But I was going to say, it may be very, very valuable to get an alliance. It's just a chiefdom, chiefdom, chiefdom. So, yeah, these are just counts. So, they don't really... Okay, that's not a terribly powerful um, alliance, so probably what we can do is we can filter for inheritable traits. Um, and yes, Vig Vigdis over here, who's Norse and everything, is intelligent. We like that. She's got great stats for helping us out as well. Like, we're marrying for genetic traits and we're marrying for stats. The only thing we're uh, not marrying for is for an alliance or the prestige of marrying into an impressive house. So I think I kind of like that. Finding a big problem with Scandinavia already? Not, yeah. Not a whole lot, a lot of people to marry. There you go. Our house. Chance of children. Medium. Um, wait, what are our traits? Stubborn. Zealous. Gregarious. Yeah, that's fine. And then uh, hopefully we can fall in love. Um, and marry for love. No, we don't do that. But well, hopefully we will. We'll either try to seduce or um, romance our spouse. 
uh, either one of them have exactly the same um, uh, boost to fertility. Whether you're lovers or soulmates, you get exactly the same uh, fertility boost. Um, so we'll just, it'll depend on what's a little bit easier. Usually seduce, seducing is a little easier. So we're going to go ahead and uh, marry her. I mean, we will. I mean, we're going to love her. She's great. She's fantastic. Okay. Armies up. What kind of warnings do we have? We could take concubines as well, which, I mean, I think that's probably a pretty good idea. Um, we can... Mary, our this is our priest lady. Is that who that is? Um, council. Yeah, our priest lady over here. We can marry her, which would be good to keep up the opinion. Or not marry, concubine her. Um, there's not. She's thirty nine, so there's not really as many baby making possibilities. But it could still be a good idea. What are succession laws actually? Um. Confederate partition. Okay. That's fine. I mean, it's not great, but it's fine. Um, male preference. And that's, I mean, that's pretty standard. We have no air right now, so that's okay, I guess. We could increase the tribal authority right around, right away. It would cost us a ton of prestige, though. Um, we lose the direct vassal opinion bonus, which doesn't matter because we don't have any vassals right now. Um, we will be able to imprison characters. The thing is, we don't have to imprison characters because we can just duel them instead. You don't really get many young women in the game anymore. It needs the old present debutante option back. You have to spawn more. As a tribal culture, you can hire men at arms using prestige instead of money. So it might be... That's true too. Yeah, now it has prestige maintenance. Now here's the interesting thing here. We've got a bunch of extra types of men at arms that are available to us because of our culture and things. Um, and I don't know like necessarily which ones are you know the best. Um, the veterans here, the Rangian veterans, are the most expensive. So presumably they're, you know... They're pretty strong. Um, they do have, like, more damage, more defense. Uh, screen value. Screen value like a defense against, like, ranged? It's, it's whiskey, whiskey and, chocolate. and chocolate! What does that mean? I mean, I know the pursuit is literally, like, being good at hunting people down that are breaking away. What does the screen benefit? And yeah, so they're, yeah, they're really, really costly. Um, especially in maintenance. So this will be 0.4... Uh, prestige per month to maintain, which is almost my prestige income. So we may not want a men at arms immediately. Screen is the opposite of pursuit. Oh, it's defense when pursue it, when retreating. Oh, okay. All right. So it's okay. We're never going to retreat, so we don't care about that stat. Banana Commander, thank you very much. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Have a bottle of Jameson on me. Ooh. Ooh. Also, thanks for showing a loop here on Monday. Picked it up and already beat chapter one. Nice. I, I am hoping to play more. I have actually played a little bit on my own. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to to giving it another go. We'll just have to figure out when we can fit into the schedule. By the way, oh, there's going to be a bonus stream tomorrow. I believe it's going to start at 3 p.m., which is an hour later than this stream started. So 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, we are going to be featuring... Hang on, let me get the, uh, the link for you. Um... There we go. We are going to be featuring Enzoned A World Apart, which honestly, I'm not convinced is a, a great name because it doesn't really tell you what the game is. Um, this is a post-apocalyptic survival game um, that it looks a little bit, just from the screenshots, I'm like, oh, this sort of looks like uh, Surviving the Aftermath. And then I started playing it and it's like, Oh no, this is crazy. This is like sort of Frostpunk it's, or m more Banished. A lot of people in the reviews are saying like, wow, this really reminds me of like a post-apocalyptic Banished. And we know how great Banished was. Uh, there's like tons of layers, complexity, lots of like citizen management, uh, resource management, production chains. Um, it's going to be pretty awesome. That's going to be a bonus stream tomorrow. They're sponsoring the stream. Um, so, uh, and that's going to start at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We'll have a timer in the channel in a sec. So, yeah, it's it's uh, End Zone, A World Apart. So, that's the the link right there if you want to click on that and see it. Uh, hell, I, I have a tracking link. Hold on. Wait. Don't click that link. Uh, g give me credit for my, uh, for things. There you go. Hold on. Let's use this tracking link instead because then the, 
the company will be like, ooh, it's really impressive how much attention he gets for our games, and we should give him more money. Um, I'm really excited for it. I, I played it yesterday to practice, and then I just kept playing it. We're like, oh yeah, this is a really, really solid game. So it's in, it's in early access now, but um, it's going to, it goes live tomorrow. Like, it goes full release tomorrow. Um, so... And I apparently the build that comes out tomorrow is adding a bunch of new stuff too. So I'm, I'm actually really excited for this one. Really, really, really excited. So anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know that there's going to be an extra stream for that. So I uh, so we could co concubine her to maybe get some extra traits um, over here, but I guess it doesn't matter that much. Uh, so we'll just pick up. Why is it highlighting this one? Why is this person not in the scroll bar? First of all, we're going to unpause and let the marriage happen first. Oh, lifestyle! So, we've got the education. We do get the 40% boost to our martial lifestyle. Um, part of me is wondering about Gallant, just because we're going to be so much better at doing um, leading from combat, having our champions or knights having the bonus effectiveness, which I think we're going to rely pretty heavily on. So, I'm wondering about, about this. We go chivalry focus for extra prowess now, especially if we're going to be leading our troops. The thing is, maybe we shouldn't lead until we got babies. But on the other hand, you know what? If it if it game's over, game's over, we restart, right? Something like that. Bum 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 bum. Yeah, eighteen martial gallant seems strong. Yeah, I, I think I think I like this idea. We're gonna go we're gonna go that way. Um, we could just go straight out martial. We could get the dread and control, but I think chivalry is gonna work out fine for us here. And yeah, we'll probably go down the gallant tree. Okay, let's do um, let's do a pause or a save. Start the uh, let's play. Live stream zero zero for the initial save. Boom. You can see I was, I was dabbling with a few things beforehand. So just gonna unpause, let the marriage kick in. Excellent. And we're gonna start scheming. It's a scheme to well, let's set romance. So romance is sixty five percent chance. Seduce is 85% chance and only 11 months like we could wait until we can get courtship over here for the 30% boost to romance scheme power But who cares? I mean, I guess if it fails we could try again I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna seduce because yeah lover and soulmate both have the same I think 25% boost to fertility and our seduce is gonna be a hell of a lot easier So we'll go ahead and try to seduce our spouse. Uh, I mean we both have great hair So of course we should be totally hot for each other. That's gonna be great. All right, so we have our troops here And yeah, if we want to um, Doesn't it show me the cost to embark? I'm, I'm wondering if the rating the rating troops embark for free. I think we've got the 75% discount to regular embarking, but I think our raiding troops might embark for free. So let's see if um, if we can raid um, Upland over here. Well, I guess it's Oiland. Oiland, because Upland is this whole area. I'm not going to pronounce a single thing right, just deal with it. I'm going to try that, because they could raise some troops to defend, but maybe it'll take them a little while to get there. So we'll see if we can uh, get it first. Um, boom, boom, boom. Raiding costs nothing when traveling over water. They are a lot more powerful than us, but hopefully, you know, but everyone's going to be more powerful than us is the problem. I'm just hoping we can raid and then run away before uh, these guys uh, can respond. Most likely, we lose a bunch of troops and oh well, who cares? Although, we are we are leading the army. Not just like, just get in prison and die right away. It's okay, we have a save. It's fine, we can just reload the save. It's going to be kind of challenging here as Gotland, which is one of the reasons I'm not playing it on Iron Man. Um, men in arms, yeah, so it's spend prestige for the men in arms, which we could do, and we may do in a second. I'm just worried about the upkeep cost. These are not these guys. No, this is from Sig 2. I'm just worried about the upkeep cost of the prestige. <laughs> Conquer, then rename Upland to Updog. Why? What's up, dog? Are we being raided at home? You son of a bitch. Well, I'm, we're nearly done this raid, so we're gonna do it. Get our 15 gold. How rude. I can't believe someone would raid us. Who raids people? I mean, honestly. 